Namaste, Namaskar, uh, greetings to one and all. I haven't posted for a while. Uh, that was because I was busy with surveys in uh, Kerala primarily and um, also in Tamil Nadu. Uh, I come to you with a new tagline, but more importantly, a new mission, uh, which is now called the National Adi Shankara Mission, which we have begun. The tagline of this mission is, you can see it right here, preserving Adi Shankara's heritage sites. Now, during the course of these surveys in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, it dawned upon me that we had indeed discovered some important identifiers or important markers regarding Adi Shankara. And I will tell you more about uh, these uh, markers today. But first, I want to give you a small background uh, about the historical period. Now, when you look at the early 9th century, it signals a complete change in Kerala. Okay. Um, the monarchy, okay, there is a new dynasty that is founded at the beginning of the 8th century, which is the Cheras of Mahode. Uh, Mahode is basically a small uh, subdivision uh, of Kungalu on the west coast uh, you know, of Kerala not far from Kochi. And uh, so at the beginning of the 9th century, around 800 CE, the Chera dynasty was founded. Not only that, the character of this monarchy was very different than what was seen before. Its structure was different and the way it functioned was different. Likewise, the structure of Kerala society was completely altered at the beginning of the uh, 9th century. And all this alteration is, you know, in the monarchy and in the in structure of the society, is attributed to this palm leaf manuscript, which is known as the Shankarasmithri, Shankarasmriti. So drawing on the authority of this manuscript, the Shankarasmriti, which is attributed to Acharya Bhagavad Pada Sri Adi Shankara, all these changes you know, were made in the character of the monarchy and the society in Kerala. Now, I was fortunate to see uh, this palm leaf manuf manuscript in the uh, CIFSS, or the Manuscript Division of the Chinmaya International Foundation in Valenard, Kerala. Now, this was this change in Kerala, right? You cannot call it change, it's an upheaval, right? Um, in Kerala, is, a, is not only is it attributed to Shankara, it is also a watershed event for Kerala in another way, in that it represents the severance from Tamil culture. Okay, it represents a severance from Tamil identity, Tamil culture, the language, and the Tamil hegemony as well. Now, all this information one can find in the thesis of Dr. M.G.S. Narayanan, okay, the renowned scholar, the renowned historian. Uh, it's, his thesis was entitled Perimars of Kerala. And, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, he, 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 you know, the title of the book actually is, is, is much, much larger as, as you see here. Uh, that was the title of his thesis. Now, what is important for us? Yes, there is a new era. There is a new change in society. All that is important. But what is important for us is that it was attributed to Bhagavad Pada Sri Adi Shankar. The historians will absolutely not accept that this Shankara Smriti, this palm leaf manuscript, was uh, you know, authored by Shankara simply because this talks about the rules and regulations of how society should be structured and governed, right? And for a philosopher, you know, of, of, for a great philosopher like Shankara, right, who you know, not only expounded Advaita, but also rejuvenated in the entire Sanatana Dharma, 
for him to actually venture down into you know uh, writing about society regulation rules etc i think it would, would be a sort of it would be far fetched and therefore uh, it's not accepted but it is very important for us that this manuscript is uh, is attributed to shankara why because if such a big alteration had to be made it had to be attributed to a towering personality it tells us that by the beginning of the 9th century shankara had been considered a towering personality in kerala now is you know this may sound surprising to you but shankara as you know was not accepted by his family families right on both sides by his community and the people in kerala at large um, so this remarkable change occurs at the beginning of the 9th century where he suddenly is is you know given prominence now just thereafter in about 825 ce the cheras of magode mahode which is you know near kudungallur as i said went further and captured the town of mahode or sorry the town of kollam uh, having won a strategic victory again against, against the pandyas the pandyas from the tamil country right so at that time they instituted what uh, professor mg s narayan talks about as a local era which is the kollam era a okay, local era because it was instituted in kollam later on much later on it became popular across kerala but in the early period it was certainly a local era now even for this there is a chronogram okay which essentially says that this coincided not only with the uh, you know founding of kollam the sorry so the capture of kollam the the victory against the pandyas but much more importantly is attributed to when the news of passing away of bhagavad pada shri shankara uh, reached uh, kerala so around 825 the claim is that the news uh, reached uh, uh, kerala and there is the chronogram says acharya vag vedya so they basically said you know what we heard about shankara's passing away so we have to institute an era uh, in coinciding with that now historians also will not believe this particular you know uh, attribution of or rather uh, the, the fact that you know uh, this was connected in any way with shankara's uh, you know passing away so uh, these are all asides but the most important takeaway from this slide is that adi shankara was had become a towering personality even in kerala where he was initially negated um you know uh, around 800 ce you know or maybe even earlier than that right? that is the important takeaway so let me show you uh one of these markers that i uh, spoke about now this particular marker is found on the sri kovil wall in the garbagraha sanctum sanctorum of the vadakanathan temple right? right at the entrance right at the entrance of the uh, garbagraha on the left you see this sculptural wall panel granite right and there is an inscription right below it right right below it um to the right um of of this particular um sculptural panel uh, right uh, or as facing us to the left right which is from the 11th century ce and is the foundational inscription for the vadakanathan temple this tells us that this is an early sculpture and who do we see here we see yoga dakshinamurthy and in important sculptures that we have seen until now we always see shankara very close to yoga dakshinamurthy okay now this is a classic image okay this is a classic image which nobody sought to study or identify before here you see a uh, sage uh, vedavyasa right blessing the child shankara or the baby shankara and there is a famous legend as we are all aware of where shankara's life was only supposed to be 16 years and 
sage veda vyasa having been pleased by his bhashyas you know or decided that he would bless him and you know his uh, age doubled uh, so he lived till the age of 32 now certainly we know that vadakanathan is important in shankara's life that there is other information connecting him to that place there is another inscription there which is about mid 12th century near the ganapati shrine which talks about the shankara parampara so from all this we know that and from legends and the shankara was yes that vadakanathan you know was very important right i mean his parents prayed for his birth there etc et so that is the legend now this tells us that contextually what we have located is certainly correct and because of its similarity with other images we can easily make the identification so this is the first marker and i will go out on a limb and say this is chera 11th century ce right 11th century ce is certainly you know the cheras of mahode uh, no one else so this is the first chera marker that we have found okay regarding chandra now this is the second one uh, that i wish to talk to you about now in velianad not very far from adi shankaran lem or cif right within 4 to 5 kilometers is a temple by the name of primarayur uh, rama temple now the local legend is that shankara sang the rama bhujanga stotra there where he refers to um, lord rama as vedasara okay and so the local legend says that this is the reason why this place is called tirumarayu because maray as you know in tamil is uh, the vedas right? now this is also very interesting um, uh, very interesting uh, marker now this is not a chera mark this is not an early mark this is a later mark maybe 15 16 century okay um, and what you see here is shiva parvati at the top this is a wooden a uh, sculpture shiva parvati at the top below which you see again you see yoga dakshina murti and right? now the image obviously is different because it is from its character is from a later period right you do see the yoga patta very clearly here and below that what do you see you see sanyasa diksha right here you see an older uh, sanyasi right with a ekadanda right seated below again a, <laughs> a tree a banyan tree right giving sanyasa diksha to younger boy again an advaiti sanyasi right and both of them are in vyakhyana mudra right both of them have vyakhyana mudra as you see here and we know that this is sanyasa diksha because the younger person has his yagyopavita still which means that it has not yet been severed so this is another marker you know this region there is tremendous number of legends there is tremendous amount of other uh, you know sort of uh, sculptural and other manuscripts and so many other things in this area in velinad that clearly we can see sanyasa diksha as the second marker related to uh, shankar and that is why i would like to sort of emphasize on my on my hypothesis that because of the recognition of the importance of shankara by the 9th century meaning 800 ce maybe even earlier than right it is quite likely that there will be many markers may not be dozens but at least quite a few uh, you know in kerala uh, connected with shankara and that it is very important to locate these markers what are these markers these markers could simply be an inscription right maybe there is a block of granite on which there is an insect inscription is incised right maybe it's an image maybe it's a image of the kind we saw in vadakanathan maybe it's an image of the kind we saw in tirumarayu rama temple in velianad or maybe you know it is a small temple you know a small shrine you know which or an edifice or monument that probably lies but it may be a below 2 or 3 inches of the ground not more than that the complete structure may be a few feet below but i think the evidence will be buried slightly below the surface now this is my hypothesis based on whatever surveys i have done based on these markers that i have found and much more information okay now these markers in my view from either the cheras of mahode or later dynasties will be found 
at the place of birth of Adi Shankara, which means at his maternal house. As I said, maybe slightly below the surface, okay, or maybe on a on a granite slab, which is buried slightly one or two inches below the ground. It may be, it will definitely be there in his maternal home, at his uh, childhood residence, and where he himself, you know, accepted nyasa at his paternal house, and his final resting place, or a memorial uh, near one of these places, or uh, at one of his family temples, which are which would be very close to one of these uh, one of these sites. Again, family temple, likely ruined family temple, uh, maybe slightly below the surface, or, or the foundation of the family temple. I think we will find these markers, inscriptions, images, right? Uh, an edifice, monument, or a small shrine, or maybe even a a, a freestanding sculpture. Right? Very likely. Now, why have these not been found? Because archaeologists have not gone looking for these markers in Kerala or elsewhere in India. Right? In contrast, in contrast to the great Gautama Buddha, they have found, you know, where he was, right? Where he 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 of course everybody knows where he meditated, but I know and where he uh, right at the Bodh Gaya. But there are they have found, you know, a lot of surveys since about 1830s uh, or 1850s where they have found so many stupas, chaityas. They have found his relics in the 1970. Itself, they found his relics. Right? They found utensils next to that. Uh, they found, um, you know, pot shirts. They found uh, urns, right? They have found, uh, recently, they have found his uh, uh, place of birth right in the center of his mother's temple, the Maya Devi temple, excavated, gone down below the Mauryan section. Uh, you know, Coningham and others have found his birthplace, right? There is an entire trail for the Gautama Buddha where you can go from his birthplace, Lumbini, Kapilavastu, all along, you know, in Uttar Pradesh up to his final resting place at Kuchinagar. And I think we have to put the same efforts, we have to convince our nation, people at large, put the same efforts, right? Including the archaeological survey of India, the state archaeological department, all of us have to work together to find these ancient markers, which will then allow us to designate the birthplace, the paternal home, to find the resting place right, of Shankara and other important places connected to him. And I'm almost sure now that there are pointers above the ground at each of these sites, which means there are again images, inscriptions, legends, there will be uh, you know, some uh, small um, connected images, deities like Yoga Dakshamurti and other things, which will guide us to these final resting sites. Final uh, sites, sorry, uh, to the several sites. I apologize. So, what I would say is that it is impo very important that we begin, you know, right? We, we begin this National Shankara mission to go exploring, looking, surveying, and finally excavating these places. And I would urge everybody in, in the country that we work together and establish uh, this uh, these sites which are closely related to Shankara and preserve them for possible. Thank you.